Welcome back to Ox Tools. If this is your first visit to my channel, I'm Tom. I'm a lifelong metal worker, avid tool collector, and practitioner of all things mechanical. During the day, I work at a not-so-secret government lab, helping people that are a lot smarter than I am by making sure they have all the tools, instruments, and widgets they need to do their scientific research. When I'm here at home in my own shop, I'm on a never-ending exploration to learn as much as I can about my trade. And along the way, my duty is to share my trade knowledge and experience and try to preserve it here on this channel. Now, with that said, let's see what we got going on today. Well, here's what we got going on today. Well, here's what we got going on today. So, this box is... Uh, pretty beat up but uh, what's inside is actually really cool this comes all the way uh, a friend of mine in England sent me this he said this sh you should have this and uh, you'll appreciate it and you'll fix it up and uh, uh, and make good use of it and that's my friend uh, Alan Barker he sent me a few things and uh, uh, you know it's not cheap to send something like this from uh, from England so Alan thank you very much uh, this is pretty awesome uh, but let's check it out. It's pretty cool. What we have is we have a Chesterman height gauge, um, and it's pretty cool. And it's and I'm going to show you some uh, some of the features of this thing and what make it kind of uh, just kind of interesting from um, a design standpoint. It's and um, you know just a usage standpoint. So it's pretty it's pretty cool that way. Um, you know, right out of the right out of the gate, you know, anything that comes in a wood box with velvet is probably two thumbs up <laughs> right out of the gate. So uh, now this one's interesting. Let me flip it over here, and you guys can get a look at it. It's got a triangular kind of uh, section or half of a diamond uh, section uh, beam here, and then um, um, an Acme screw, and then it has a quick adjust here, which is kind of interesting. Now. When I got it from Alan, um, it had some, uh, some, some minor problems, uh, you know, nothing major. And this video will be about uh, kind of fixing it up a little bit. So uh, there's a couple things going on and uh, we're going to take care of them. And that, in fact, that's the old part right there. So, uh, um, but we'll, uh, we'll go through all that. And uh, but anyway, uh, let's get to get in a little closer and we'll get a look at this and you guys can see uh, you know, one of the spectacular things on this thing that I think is um, is the patina on this, right? The patina of use. So whatever shop this thing was in, it was heavily used and, and well used and probably the favorite, uh, you know, the shop favorite. That would be my guess. And, um, um, you know, just by, by looking at some of the things, and we'll look at them a little closer, okay? So pretty... Pretty cool. So here's a shot of the um, the working side of this thing here, and um, and check it out. So we've got inches on one side, and then uh, millimeters on the other, which is kind of cool. <clears throat> now this thing, just by the nature of its design, it doesn't go all the way to zero, and um, so you know you can make an offset. Uh, uh, in fact, I have one uh, that I'll probably put with this. Um, so that uh, that we that I can do uh, all the way down to zero because that's kind of useful uh, small numbers and whatnot and uh, but this one kind of starts at uh, at two inches there okay um, now w check out some of these things okay so for starters take a look at this knob right here look at look at the wear on that knob now this what this knob is this is a fine adjust here and uh, when we when we rotate this let's see is the screw in the picture there. Yeah, you can see the screw turning here, right? So that's uh, your fine adjust there. And just look at that wear. It's polished and the neural is nearly smooth there, right? And then the other thing that I noticed here is these little uh, finger uh, releases for the, uh, the quick adjust here. They're just polished and smooth, right, from, from, from heavy use. Um, so pretty, pretty cool. And you can see that this is the new piece that we're going to make here on camera here, that little little guy there. And then uh, the other thing that I really think is cool, look at the neurals, these little uh, 
uh, I don't know what pebble neural or whatever you want to call that there, right? Where the, the neural is in the center, it's relieved on either side, and then the neural is like a series of dots, basically, which is pretty, uh, pretty interesting. And the fact that the, those two screws are still there, right, as part of the, as part of the kit is pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Now, Chesterman is a, uh, it's in, from Sheffield, England, and they're a well-known um, uh, maker of precision tools. Uh, they make calipers and height gauges and um, taper gauges and all, all kinds of, uh, you know, kind of tool room um, uh, tools, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. And this is a uh, Chesterman number 369. And um, let's, let's go ahead and put the, uh, and then there's a little, the little clamp. Now, this neural does not match these neurals, so it's possible that this is from a, uh, um, let's see, and I think, let's see, my recollection, I forgot which way this goes here, let's put this at, at pretty close to zero, like that, okay. And then I think this is two inches, yeah, to the top, right? So this is kind of old school that the uh, um, the describer goes on top, right? Now I can put it down below, and that drops me down. Um, in fact, it's marked another six hundred thousandths there on the uh, on the uh, on the beam, like so, like that, slide that down, and then uh, as part of the kit. It has a little two-inch, uh, a little two-inch uh, block here, um, and I can't. I don't have my magnifiers on. Sorry, guys. I'm blind as a bat without those. That you can uh, just kind of verify that uh, that you're where you think you are, and it's it's off a little bit right now. Okay, uh, by the by the vernier, and uh, so I think, and I haven't dug into it yet. But I think what you do is you loosen these screws and you shift the scale just ever so slightly to, uh, to bring it into calibration. Now I measured this block and it's a little bit long, so I may lap it a little bit and uh, put, it, uh, put it spot on. And, um, um, and I also may lap, relap the bottom of this too. It's not, it's not in bad shape, it looks pretty good. I haven't checked it for flatness, um, but it's, it's not, uh, it doesn't look too bad. And then there's a, uh, and you'll see this later on too, is there's a little uh, pinion gear and a big, uh, big large bull gear, bull gear, it's, you know, it's a gear this big, um, that's uh, connected to this, uh, the screw uh, to make these adjustments. So anyway, let's, uh, let's dig into this thing and uh, let's fix this thing up and let's get it back into uh, tip top shape, eh? What do you say? All right, so there's our gauge block. And we're a little bit long. It's showing five tenths, but uh, I was holding this for a little bit. And um, the micrometer is showing about three tenths, I think. Yeah, about three tenths long. So we'll probably just lap uh, the ends a little bit uh, to restore the finish. And, uh, and flatness and then uh, see what we got here. So uh, I'm gonna go run and do a quick lap on that and then we'll come back and see how we're looking. So I got it sitting so there's just scuffing the, the gauge block. And you know, I noticed that the, these screws uh, have, I would call it uh, shop DNA in them. Um, you know, from all the guys that uh, had used this thing. <laughs> and uh, pretty funny, you could probably identify some of the people uh, that uh, use this thing. So what I'm doing is I'm just loosening these screws. I mean, ideally you would, okay, that one's got some problems there. I think people have been in here before. 
you know, you take the thing all the way apart and ultrasonic clean it and whatnot. But uh, I'm trying not to disturb it too much either because I like the look of it the way it is, right? It's got that I've been used look to it. Okay, so I got a slight index error here. I'm just going to see if I can influence that. Just a, just a skosh there. Otherwise, what do you do? You get the shim that up, probably, or something, something silly like that. Okay, I thought I felt it move there. That's better. Still not quite, quite there. All right, let's lock that. Pretty close, but not quite. It's not moving. I should probably take that off and see what's going on. It doesn't seem to be moving uh, like I thought it should. Hmm. All right, so I was able to I was able to get it. So what I did was I calibrated the uh, the indicator. Oops, dang it. Um, on the so that I was working on the top of the uh, uh, the ball, and uh, and now the I got the index mark on two inches, and I'm at two inches according to this too. So we should be pretty good. Now I just I took the scale off and I cleaned it a little bit, and actually somebody had already been in there before and slotted the holes just a, a whisker in this in this bar. So as I suspect this thing has seen a, a fair amount of use and so they had to uh, had to compensate a, a little bit uh, during its lifetime to uh, to keep that scale uh, in the right position uh, you know on the little gauge block here so so we slotted it a little bit with just a needle file and uh, I was able to get it on the uh, on the index marked spot on and uh, so looking pretty good happy with that so here's the offending little piece here this is the piece that was uh, that was injured. Somebody had tried to take it apart before at some point, and um, I think the threads galled, and they weren't able to get it fully snug um, like it should be. And this piece, just so you, for reference, passes through the vertical uh, triangular bar here, and then goes through this piece here. Uh, actually, let me just do it this way here. So you guys can see it goes through here and then this little this little uh, lock nut uh, locks it to the base and this was like floating in there so uh, causing some trouble so we're gonna we're gonna make a new one of these uh, it's pretty straightforward here um, you can see what's left of the threads there uh, we're just basically ripped loose um, so uh, anyway pretty straightforward piece we'll go make one of those real quick so this is why you save all these little pieces of brass, because uh, this is going to work out great for the um, the nut for that little part for the Chesterman. And um, so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and do it up. Pretty straightforward.
run the drill through and then just do a very light skim pass with the boring bar um, to see where we are. Okay, four four. What's our number? Four six. All right, let's do this. Four four. Enter. And then I'll get a I'll get a something better to measure that. We'll go to 450, and then I'll take a precision measurement at that point. And just a pro tip there. Um, when you're doing a little part like this and you're doing a precision bore on it, um, you know, turn more than you need and bore more than you need if, uh, if it doesn't matter on the stock. Uh, that way if you screw up later on, you're, uh, you're three quarters of the way done uh, for a, a replacement part. Let's take a better measurement here. Four fifty one five. Okay, that's our new number. Four five one five. That's pretty close. So this is a uh, twenty eight uh, threads per inch uh, tap. We're gonna tap this little monkey. Parting off to a threaded hole, when you're breaking through that last little bit, just go real slow so it has a chance to, well, cut the threads. <laughs> now we gotta go find that thing. <laughs> well, this is what I was trying to describe. You see the, uh, see this little hanger that's left here? If you go real slow, although this one's coming off pretty easy here, um, if you go real slow, a lot of times it's just less work to uh, to get that removed off of your keeper part. Also, if you have a little bit of angle on the front of your tool, it helps. And um, I didn't look at that particular parting tool to see which direction it was going. But anyway, that's it. So when you got a little thin part like this that you got to hold on to, and you know, do a little detailing on the back. Um, in this case. I can screw the tap in there to kind of help hold it. gives me a little handle to, uh, to hang on to it. So that I can just uh, do a quick uh, lap on the back side and get a, get a nice, uh, nice finish on it there. You know, you're going to run the tap through it anyway after you deburr it just to uh, make sure that the threads are cleaned up and uh, everything's happy. So, All right, let's get some here.
20. Alright, slow the feed down. Now we'll do our 558. I want to uh, double check our uh, the uh, 627. for fun here. Make sure the DRO is tracking here. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Yep. Alright, 558. <laughs> is the section with the threads on it so I want that to be okay four good it's tracking me. basic stuff there. Gotta love a precision ground solid carbide boring bar. A beautiful thing. So we're pretty much going all the way in with this. That. Right there. That is pretty much it maxed out. Out to go. And okay, there it is. Piston fit. Gotta love that, right? Every machinist likes that. And then that's our beat up one. Okay, so <clears throat> We're gonna thread this little um, this little ring right here. This is uh, for the nut that we made before. So let's get set up to uh, to thread here. First, I wanna I wanna zero the tool, and I like doing it like this. Go like this. Put a little tiny line in that. Creep up on it. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to zero that axis. All right. 
Checkerino. Make sure I'm happy with that. Alright, looks good to me. Let's uh, do a little thread in there. So the um, um, if you make the nut first, then uh, you know you got your uh, your nice thread gauge that you're going to use to uh, to check the thread. I should probably go look and see how deep I'm supposed to go here. Before I get carried away here, let me go do that. <laughs> before, I, before I bozo something here, huh? I'm gonna get a nice uh, fat thread relief there too. It's uh, uh, you know, kind of makes it cream cheese. It's almost cheating. <laughs> I don't think we're very close, but it never hurts to uh, never hurts to give it a little try because it's really annoying when you make a a loose thread that not very machinist like. <laughs> Okay, I think that's pretty good. And <clears throat> when you check a thread like this, make sure you run it all the way down to you go all full engagement because sometimes when you, you know, if the clearance is close, like you want it, um, when you, if you have a lot of threads in engagement, there's a, there's a fair amount of drag on it. So uh, it's uh, one thing you should always do is just run it all the way down. Okay, thread's good. Um, so we're gonna back turn a, a shoulder behind here for this little bit right here and then uh, we'll part it off and uh, Bob's your uncle. Okay, so we got our new little pieces here and only one little operation left is uh, there's the original. Um, it's got some um, some slots in it to to allow you to tighten it up and they milled a, a slot and this is always a kind of a tricky thing because it takes a special tool to uh, to uh, to do that um, mainly because it's not cut all the way through so you can't just stick a large screwdriver in there so you need something that looks like this it's got two flats on it which is actually a kind of an oddball rare tool so they probably had a custom tool you know to tighten this up so what we're going to do is we're just going to put two holes in that and then we can use some uh, some sturdy snap ring pliers to uh, to tighten that that nut up so this goes through here like that okay that fits then it goes through the base and it's secured with the uh, with the lock nut there so uh, Let's do that last operation, then we can put this thing back together and, uh, and see if we can calibrate it and uh, play around with it a little bit. So we're just going to poke a couple of holes through there. I'm just going to hold it down with one screw right in the middle here. Hopefully I got enough room next to the washers to uh, drill my holes. I'm just trying to center that washer up a little bit. Okay. And then, um, so this is the idea, right? So we're just going to have two holes, and then we can stick the those in there and use that to tighten the uh, tighten the mess up. So 
Let's uh, indicate that little monkey and get on center here and go from there. enough for the girls I run with. All right. Okay. All right. Just missed that uh, washer there. Clears. Oh yeah, it's feeling pretty good there. Okay, and we'll put the screws back in there and off we go. Put a little bit of, a little bit of uh, So good. For sure. Okay. Make sure we didn't do anything weird. Yep. Okay, that's pretty happy. And then, uh, I mean, even the cover is made out of brass on this thing, which is kind of cool. And then it's got that enamel, but it, it's a little bit chipped up. It's just, it's just pretty. These itty bitty little screws. Put those back in. Fetch a little screwdriver, and then uh, we'll see what this thing looks like. All right, so I think we're ready here to uh, uh, cut our really expensive <laughs> little box latches here. Get some brass sheet in there.
hole is fitting the, um, the pivot holes right now. nice it's just you know it's it's like foil that's left right now um let's go ahead and take those out we're uh, pretty happy with that and we'll snap those loose and deburr them there's our um, <laughs> very expensive little swing latches that I probably could have just driven to the hardware store and bought, but we made them. Um, so I got a little dot on them here. You can see a little dot. And the idea in this little this little off sticker here is I'm going to bend it up so that you have something to get your uh, your finger on to uh, to work the latch. So let's bend those and see how that works. All right, let's give this a try. So I got a this got a little uh, point on it, so I can get down close to the edge of the vise. To do that, I don't know how much I want. That's probably enough, but you know how that is, right? There we go. I should just stop all in my head. Okay, I should have done both at the same time, but. Uh, Oh yeah, that makes it stick up a little bit higher, which is nice, which is what I want. Get that vertical, like that. Okay, clamp, and then whack. I'm gonna go farther on that one. Let's try it. Oh yeah. So let's do this one a little bit more. Not bad for eyeballing, eh? Alright, let's stow this thing here. Okay, 
and then we'll put our little uh, our little latches that we made uh, on there, and then uh, we'll call this uh, pretty good for now. And uh, oops, I need a couple of screws here. It looks like so. Uh, okay, let's do that. So that one's gonna go there. I found some uh, some little brass screws. Hopefully the the work. All right. Unfortunately, I got one Phillips and one uh, slotted, so it's a little bosonic there, but not too bad. I only measured one side for the center to center distance, so hopefully I didn't. I didn't mess with that. Oh yeah, that works. Okay. You can see that, that little that little tang that this helps you helps you get it there. Well I probably should really not mess with it much. I probably should uh, fill those holes with some uh, epoxy or something and redrill them but uh, I'm not gonna get too crazy here. I'm already going off the reservation a little bit but all right. That's pretty good, huh? Block. Nice. All right. Well, I hope you guys like that. Uh, it's kind of a restoration light, I would call it. Um, and, you know, I've mentioned this before that uh, part of what I enjoy about a tool like this is the, the patina of use on it, okay? Sure, you could regrind and polish this thing and make it look like the day it left the showroom, but to me that doesn't honor the uh, uh, all the folks that use this thing over the years and uh, you know earned a living, uh, put food on their families' tables, etc. Uh, uh, with this tool, and uh, you know if I completely obliterate uh, um, their signs of passage, then. Uh, I don't know, I, that's just my feeling about it, okay? So we went a little bit nuts. We made some latches that are probably, you know, a dollar at the store, but anyway, it was fun. And Alan, thank you so much for sending this along. I really uh, uh, enjoy this tool. It's uh, pretty spectacular, and um, people that come over and visit, uh, you can check it out and check out the Chesterman Hype Gate. So thanks for watching, and uh, Consider subscribing if you like this kind of content. Talk to you later.